we have a very exciting episode today because we've got a special guest in. Yeah, no, no problem at all. Thanks for having me. We're James on the podcast because he is what we would consider a very good runner. Well, I wanted to start running and then Mike jumped on the bandwagon and yeah. then just outdid me in everything. And now <laughs> he's like all great and I'm rubbish. So hit us with the... Uh, the number of your fastest marathon. 2018 was my quickest marathon and I ran two hours 23. Do you feel that you have that in the locker? The problem that we had on the day was that it was boiling hot. It was like 30 plus degrees. It was it was roasting. I needed to hear this probably about yeah. however long. Yeah. And that got me an England vest in the end. Action. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everyone. Welcome back to A Couple of Coaches podcast with me, Emma and Hi. Mike, <laughs> your usual hosts. Um, we have a very exciting episode today because we've got a special guest in. Uh, this is James, and we'll Hello, let him James. introduce nice himself. Um, so yeah, again, another person just to give a different perspective yeah. on things. Um, and James is actually quite a pro runner. Well, we think anyway, we think, <laughs> but no, we're going to find out He more. definitely is. When you, uh, when you hear the times, it doesn't make much sense, but yeah. we'll go into it more. Anyway, James, how are you? Yeah, very well. Thank you. Good, yeah, good, good. Well. Um, so, we're James on the podcast because he is what we would consider a very good runner, although he doesn't seem to think it himself, but mm -hmm. he is definitely a, a very, very good runner. Um, so, I think if we start by just introducing yourself, what you do and how you kind of got into running and then we'll... Bombard you with questions. <laughs> yeah, no, no problem at all. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, running sort of came about really through uh, through football. I've always been football, really. Um, play, work in football. Um, but uh, it's a typical sort of footballer's story, really. Got injured. Yeah. Um, was never going to be a professional footballer. Um, was always really competitive. I think the thing was with football was that I felt like I... Uh, when I was playing, I needed almost a superpower because I wasn't technically as good as everybody else. So that sort of drove me towards sort of fitness side of it. And yeah. that's where I picked up running, really. So my mum wouldn't, uh, my mum would definitely say it was pretty much down to her. She was running a marathon at the time <laughs> um, picked up an injury, needed to get fit, was getting fat, felt slow, sluggish. And uh, yeah, 2012, the journey started where, um, yeah, I got myself in London Marathon. And then, um, yeah, it's... Uh, it's gone from there, really, from there. and it's got more and more competitive and as we've gone, really. So. Okay, that's quite cool. So it started in, that was your first, was that your first race in yeah. 2012? How did that go? Uh, yeah, it was really good. It was, um, so I ran London, like I said, my mum was doing it, um, typical sort of entry, go and raise money for charity sort yeah. of thing. Um, I loved it, like I'd recommend anyone, if you get the opportunity to do London Marathon, it's the best, it's the best marathon. Um, the atmosphere is just incredible. Yeah. But yeah. Um, yeah, I ran, what did I run? I ran three hours, 14 minutes for my first marathon. That was just doing everything off my own back, really. A mm. um, bit of training, getting fit. Um, absolutely loved it. Um, it was great fun. Um, and yeah, like I said, it just went from there, really. That's where you decided, oh, I like this. Yeah, yeah. Because it, it, it started to then get, right, I gotta go, I'm close to sub three now, so I gotta go under three. Mm. And then you get to three and you're like, right, I'll go 245 now. It's a bit, of a dict a bit addictive. Yeah, and then you go, right, I'll go 230 now. So mm -hmm. it starts to like snowball, really. But um, no, it was good fun, that first one. And uh, certainly got a bug for it from there, really? really, yeah. Did you know um, you were going to do it in that time? when you did, like, did you train for that or did you almost surprise yourself? I surprised myself. I yeah. didn't really have any sort of knowledge on it. Mm. Like, I didn't go, I was just going out and doing long runs and no one really to advise me. I didn't really... Um, had a watch and stuff but it was really chilled out like I, I just had a go at it mm. um with, with the aim of running as quickly as I could of yeah. course but there was no like data or anything behind it I was just going right let's go run 18 miles tonight get a long run in and then um slowly built it up from there really so but at, that, at that time I think uh so yeah 2012 so like I said I was coming back from an injury uh quite a long um a long injury that I had I'm pretty sure I was probably back playing by that point. So I was playing football and running at the same time. So mixing both. Um, so, um, so yeah, the sort of mileage per week was probably isn't as high as it should have been, but yeah. I was still playing. So it was difficult to manage. So. Okay. 3.15. So hit us with the, uh, the number of your fastest marathon. So people can get an understanding of how far you've come. So yeah, 2018 was my quickest marathon. And I ran two hours 23. 
that day. It's <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> yeah. Two hours, 23. Two hours, 23, yeah, I ran. That was in Toronto. Yeah. Was that proper trained for? Yeah, like yeah. So that 2018 was sort of like my big, um, my big sort of breakthrough year really for marathons. So I ran, uh, start of 2018, we, I was with a coach at this point, um, which I can go into if you're, you're interested, but um, she was sort of looking after me, putting programs together um, and we were really having a go at it. And the aim was um, going into that London marathon, the aim was to qualify to run for England. Um, so I needed to run 222. And um, yeah, set about sort of from Christmas time really as most marathon runners go, whether you're you're an elite or whether you're you're um, sort of just participating and, and getting through a marathon. The, sort of your marathon build up starts from just before Christmas. So yeah. we set off on that, and um, the the problem that we had on the day was that it was boiling hot. It was like thirty plus degrees. It was it was roasting. So. I remember sat being sat down with my coach and she said, right, we're going to have to strip the pace back now. Like you're not going to be able to go as quickly as you wanted to. Because we were pretty sure I was in roughly 220, 221 shape. She's like, you're going to have to strip it back. And I was like, no, that's not happening. <laughs> no, I need They've to gone all this way. Yeah. I'm not. But um, she convinced me and it was the right thing to do. Um, I remember sort of getting to halfway London Bridge and past so many people where they just tried to stick to stick to what they'd trained at. But because of the heat, it just wasn't possible. <laughs> So, um, so yeah, I came in, uh, I ran 226 that day, but it was more the position that I finished. So I was sixth Brit and so all across the line. Um, and ultimately the selectors said, um, because of that time in that heat and where you placed more than anything else, um, that got me an England vest in the end. So Did it? Wow. Yeah, oh, that got me wicked. an England vest. So yeah, that then let me, so that took me out to Toronto. So I had to then train for a second marathon and that was October time in 2018. So now that's when I went out and ran 2.23. So. That's a, a wicked thing to say you've done, though, that you've yeah. actually run for England because yeah. there's not many people that obviously do that. There's a lot of runners out there, but that's pretty... Uh, no, yeah, something pretty, I'm really proud of. That's yeah. insane to me. That, oh, 100%. Yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, that's insane. Yeah. Um, you got any questions, Emma? Emma's, Emma's the, uh, Emma's the, ru Emma's the, the no, runner. I'm really not. <laughs> I'm really not. We both basically started running yeah. end of last year. Well, I wanted to start running and then Mike jumped on the bandwagon and yeah. then just outdid me and everything. And now <laughs> he's like all great and I'm rubbish. I'm, I'm, I'm not great. <laughs> after, after, after the times we've just heard, I'm not great. <laughs> <laughs> um, how long would you say, so from your first marathon, how long did it sort of take you to get to like your best marathon? Oh, it took me a long time. Yeah. yeah, it took me a long time. So 2012, I would say, was the year that I properly started long distance running. Mm. And like I said, it was 2018 before I really kicked on, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, it's a good six years, isn't it? Good six years. It depends what you're targeting. So I was target. I, I got the bug for the marathon, so I was really targeting that. So like big miles, long runs, um, you know, it's doing a training block, whatever level you are, it, it, there's a lot of commitment and there's a lot that you need to do to train for a marathon. Mm. Um but yeah, I was targeting the marathon. If you're targeting 5K, 10 day, 10Ks, it's a little bit different and you can yeah. sort of manage your training and doesn't have to be such big miles all of the time. Consume into your life training for a marathon constantly because yeah. you're, oh, yeah. you're doing long, long hours. Oh yeah, massively, yeah. What, is, what did your training blocks kind of look like? Mm. So to start to start with, and I, I was funny, I have these conversations with family and friends all the time. Before COVID, I was doing nine to five in London as well. So a lot of my training would be um, commuting to train station, getting off, running to the office, um, doing the same on the way home, getting back and then going out for 10 miles. So I'll be doing like 15 mile on a Monday, for example, yeah. um, and just be making up miles around work. Um, since COVID's hit, um, it's been completely different. Obviously, I, um, I like many people, I'm sure, work from home the other day. And yeah. It's much easier to You've manage. Got a bit more freedom. Yeah, mm. a bit more freedom. So... It was tricky around. It was tricky around that. So that was I. I look, think back, and think, how the hell did I do that? Um, but it, if in like, so a block of training for me would be like sixteen weeks for a marathon, mm -hmm. um, and you'd be looking to get up to 80, 90, 100 mile a week. So, so, so far. yeah, right. it's a yeah. lot of miles per week for that. Was that with some strength training in there as well? Um, I'm sure you'll touch on these points as we go. <laughs> um, <laughs> And I'm sure uh, Lou, my brother, would vouch. I, I'm, I'm not good at recovery. I'm not good at strength work. My diet's not great. And um, there's so many levers I could probably pull. Um, but I, 
part of me runs because I just love to you eat. You love running. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's mad because it obviously shows like how much of a talent you have for running if you don't even do them other components that you could do that yeah. could yeah, potentially yeah. help you, I guess, go, yeah, yeah. Yeah, go it's, further. It's been one thing that certainly me and um, Alison, my coach, that we we talk about quite a lot. There's a lot of, lot of levers we try and pull. Um, but it's, it, is, it, it isn't easy. Like when no. you, I, I've always said that the miles, the, the run in the miles isn't the problem. It's that everything that's wrapped around that, yeah. th that's the difficult thing. So being able to find time to go and see a physio, get a sports massage. The diet I haven't really got an excuse for because that's that's me to manage. But um, if you're running sort of 15 mile a day, where are you supposed to go and do a strength session in yeah, that? If you've got yeah, a nine yeah. to five job, it's, it's, yeah. it's really It is difficult. really hard to find that find that split and mm. i mean i find it as well with clients that are training for marathons and we're not running coaches so majority of clients i have that are doing marathons they will probably have that their own coach who specialized at that i'd rather not take that on yeah, because yeah. I, I mean i can't even do it myself so <laughs> i'm not going to teach someone but it's really hard to incorporate their strength training with their running yeah, because yeah. there is so much running yeah involved and it's yeah, yeah. it's hard to find that balance obviously nutrition is is important yeah. because you know you need your glycogen stores and energy to be yeah top all the time yeah yeah but strength training is hard yeah i mean mm -hmm. especially like if you want to do some conditioning on your legs or something yeah, i mean yeah. you can't really yeah, and you're doing like two or three sessions a week sometimes or certainly i was and you, like you, if you've got doms from a strength session you don't really want it or need it when no. you're trying to run k reps or something <laughs> mm. for example or mile rep so it, it, it's difficult to know where it is but at the same time like yeah i, I make excuses for it i should i should be doing at least like i don't know some body weight squats and yeah, yeah, lunges yeah. and stuff like that um, that might just help a little bit mm. um but yeah i've never really had a proper go here if i'm honest do you have a a warm-up routine every time you run or do you just walk out the door <laughs> <laughs> can imagine he does <laughs> yeah, it, <laughs> yeah it, it depends really like so like this morning uh i just walked out the door went for a run yeah um but uh, yeah, so I did a race on Sunday and um, yeah, you'll go for like a couple of miles, like easy jog, um, leg swings and all that sort of stuff, that stuff yeah, yeah, that you go through. And it's just a routine, like like any sport, like yeah. when when we play football or whatever, you, you go through a certain routine to get your body and your mind and everything else ready to go more yeah, than anything else. Mm. Um, so yeah, if, if it's a race, I'll do like a routine, but Monday morning, I'll just get out, just get get out the go. door, yeah, mm. go and do it. What was so. the race at the weekend? Uh, so I was up in Manchester at the weekend. We did like, uh, there was a 10K race at the weekend on Sunday. We did it. So um, yeah, a little bit up and down, a little bit hilly, but it was good fun. Mm. A little bit wet. Go on, hit so. us with the numbers. Yeah, God. What did you do it in? Uh, what did I run on Sunday? I ran 30.50 on Sunday. 30.50? Yeah. 30.50 for a 10K. 10K. Mm. Yeah. Which is, yeah. yeah, that's mental. Not bad going. And your fastest one again? So I ran 10K think i did 10k again it depends what you're focusing at so I, mm. I did have a little go wrong and i could do some 5k 10ks um so i ran 10k in 29.50 which is i'm sort of like i call myself sub elite i'm not elite but i'm sub elite yeah, almost yeah. and you i did if you can run i've always looked at i think the running world probably looks at it this way as well if you can run sub 15 for 5k sub 30 for 10k and if you can run sort of like a sub two hours 20 for a marathon you, you're probably considered a really strong club runner mm. so i got one more to tick off one more to yeah tick and, off. I, and then i'm quite happy i can retire and <laughs> not worry Did about you say that's a club me. runner that's that that blows my mind mm. yeah but people always say that so people always say this to me like i'm a girlfriend people at work they're like oh you're like you're only a, you're only like 10 minutes off like two hours 10 olympic stuff but that 10 minutes is such a big yeah. game. Oh, it's God, huge. Yeah. And like, you're never going to, there's no funding in the sport purely because yeah. Kenyans, Ethiopians, like they're running two hour marathons. You're never going to get close to that. Mm. Does that blow your mind? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to put it into context, like I always look, so if you break down their split, so if you were to look, I don't know, the, the guy that sadly passed away, he, he ran like a two hours, one marathon, something like that. If you look at their 5K, 10K splits, that's what I'm running flat out. For 10k oh, and 5k for your like fastest for my fastest. and they do that the whole way they doing that the whole way for a marathon yeah 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 so you don't that's how you start to get a bit of a context of how far ahead they are yeah um do you know what it's similar no. almost similar to a bit different it's like golf isn't it like you're like a scratch golfer mm. and then you've got people that play on like yeah. the pro tour yeah, yeah, so you are yeah. like 
an elite runner, yeah. like if you go, if you knock up anywhere, you're going to stand a chance of yeah. winning or something. Mm. Um, but then the people that are that ahead, it's like, how yeah. have you even got there? Yeah. Mm. It's, it's really difficult. I got to a point where I'd, I'd done really, really well, but there was almost a point where I probably needed to go part time in everything that I did so that I could concentrate more on running, give myself yeah. time to do recovery and yeah. strength work and everything. But um, yeah, your, your job doesn't allow you to do that unless there's sort of you got some, you got sponsor or funding or something to, to support you. Ultimately, you got a mortgage to pay and you got stuff to, to yeah, sort of out. Mm. So. Mm. Let's talk injuries then. Okay. Because I was going to say that. That's the one thing that I've definitely found. Yeah. Obviously, being a complete beginner runner. Yeah that I've been knocked down by a few injuries. Mike here is perfect, hasn't had anything, all fine. Yeah. Um, how do you sort of deal with having an injury and having to like take time away from it and not do anything? Because it can be really frustrating. It's really, really frustrating. It's really tough. Mm. It is really tough. And I think um, the more, when I, when I first started out, obviously injuries were quite frequent purely because of the amount of mileage I was doing. Mm. Um, it, it, it is really, really difficult. It's not easy at all. And I, I would I can't sit here and say I got all the answers to it. Mm. I think I've probably become a little bit more relaxed to it. Um, certainly with my running, like inevitably I'm, I'm going all right at the minute. I've done five, six weeks training, don't feel injured, feel all right. But I know something will be around the corner at some point. Mm. It, you, you're not going to be able to um, get away from that. Um, I, I, found, I think cross training is really important. Because the big thing for me was more, if I can't get out for a run, then psychologically, I don't feel like I've done anything for the day. Mm -hmm. I don't feel productive in what mm -hmm. I've done. Um, so I swim quite a bit. I'll do a bit of swimming if I'm struggling. Um, and that sort of gets all the endorphins out and I feel like yeah. I've done something. Mm -hmm. um, still doesn't quite have that hit of a run. but So I guess finding something else that will give you that little sense of, um, I've really enjoyed that. And I've, I, you know, I've... It's almost got what I could have got out from a run. Yeah, um, mm. yeah it's a diff it is a really difficult one and it's hard to deal with. I think that's the way I've almost dealt with it is, is there anything else that I can do can that do. will give me that little kick? Yeah. Um, so any, sorry, sorry, an injury is like physical, but it actually affects you um, mentally massively. probably yeah. more. Hugely, yeah. It, and that's, that's the one, especially when um, at any level, it doesn't matter if you're running at, at, at the level I am or... Um, if you're looking to complete a marathon, it it if you're missing a run or if you're not ticking it off, that has a real big impact on you. So mm. I could, you're like, oh, I should have been doing that. Mm. You know, I should have been out today doing ten mile, whatever it is. It, not having that sense of right, tick that off, that's done. Is it's re it's really difficult. It is really difficult. But yeah, I think um, as I've got older, as I've got a little bit more wiser, I guess with running, I've I've kind of thought to myself. If you can find something that you sort of continue to maintain your fitness and can get over it psychologically, then yeah. it seems You're to be right. all right. Yeah. Do you mm. have any injuries that have kind of not left you alone? Always kind of come back and go. Um, yeah, I guess like um, so. That's how, when I in two thousand and twenty, in two thousand and twelve, that was I had um I had a fracture and a, I think I ruptured a, a ligament in my knee. Um, and I had to have a couple of operations on that. Um, so I know that uh, when my knee's starting to get sore and I'm doing quite a lot, yeah. or I know that my hip's probably going to play up at some point. Mm. So I've got little, um, yeah, there's little pinch points where I know, okay, something's going to flare up soon. Um, but nothing like, other than that, there's nothing too major. Obviously you get tight calves and everything yeah. else that you get through um, through running Achilles. Like, oh, you might get sore Achilles, but nothing too major that's... Um, hamper me too much. Do you have any tips on tight calves? My brother struggles with tight yeah, calves. Yeah, he does, doesn't he? Mm. It's when he runs, he always gets tight calves. Does he? Yeah. I, I, um, when my calves get tight, I get up on the stairs or on the curb and just do just, just calf raises. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kind of it does the trick do. for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. works Fair quite enough. well. How yeah. would you find the um, the mental side of things? Because you you probably find that if you're running. And you you feel your knee mm. that then impacts your run because you're kind of thinking about your knee. Mm. Yeah. But do you have an, do you do you ever find that like if you're doing a race and you feel something whether it be your hip or your knee, does that kind of stop you or slow you down or? Um, I can't say I've ever had it in a race. I think I'm so preoccupied with what's going on. I can't I can't say I've gone. 
I can really feel my knee. I'm really struggling. But if I'm if I'm on a training run and it and I feel my knee, it's almost having that willpower to go right. I need to stop here. Yeah. And oh, not okay. Run. And that's difficult. As much because as you don't want to. You don't want yeah. to. No, you just want to get to the, you want to do the run that you've set out to do. Mm. The challenge, the challenge is actually going, no, hang on, I've got to stop here. Um, if you're close enough to home, you might yeah, as well yeah. keep going. You keep if you're going, not, yeah. yeah. If, you're, if you're far enough you're away. You're still 10k away. Yeah, you're like, you might as well still <laughs> jog it and yeah. see what happens. Um, but uh, that I think it's having the willpower to, to stop so mm. that you're not doing any more damage to it. Um, and that will probably help you in the longer run. But um and I've, I've had that loads of times and I could probably, yeah, there's probably loads of times I should have just stopped and not yeah. ran, but you, you're in that mindset. You've got to get to the end and complete that run and then you deal with whatever happens afterwards. Um, so, yeah, it's a difficult one. I think you've got to stop if you feel like if you feel struggling. Right, you know. yeah, mm. yeah, which isn't easy. No. It's not no. easy. Um, so what are you training for at the moment? What's so I had, I've had like... Um, sort of maybe two, three years of sort of just, um, I say just enjoying running. Like you pr- you can get to a point where if you go marathon after marathon, you just constantly feel like you're training all the time. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I run because I enjoy it really. Um, you know, I go and do part run and yeah, I'll, I'll run it as fast as I can, but I'll go find my mum at the end and we'll have a jog round and it's yeah. nice social for us or mm. or my brother or, or somebody be running and we'll go and have a little jog round. So I've spent the last couple of years just sort of running for enjoyment. Um, I've probably started since about maybe just before Christmas, this for three or four weeks, getting back into it and um, sort of training properly. So um, I did Brighton Half a few weeks back, which um, was good for 10 mile. And then for, for 5K, it was absolutely awful. Um, went round the Hove Lagoon and as you turn back, it was you were just met by this almighty headwind. Oh, so it was awful. Yeah. Really slows you down. Yeah, mm. it was awful. Yeah, it was great for 10 mile and then awful for five for 5K. Um, but uh, so I did that and then I'm going to try, I'm doing Reading Half, which is I think mid-April time. Um, and then I might try and do another half marathon before sort of June time, but then I'm, I'm thinking... Um, of doing another marathon like i said still got one thing to tick off which is the sub 220 so i'd like to do that october time and make that happen mm. i'd like to think so but again it comes down to injuries and everything yeah. else got to get there first so um we'll see but that that's the target in the moment do so. you think do you feel that you have that in the locker yeah it's the one thing that i think i'm um, probably the reason why i'm still looking to compete and do it um i feel like i've been there i've been in shape to do it um but then it's not quite happened for me, whether injuries, whatever else uh, might have played, a, had a contributing factor to it. Um, but um, it's the one thing, it's just my my thing I've got to do. You've got running, to do yeah, it. I have to do it at like some point. Like you said, like you've done the, the sub tens and fives. Yeah. Well, more more than sub. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to do a 45 minute 10K and you're doing it in 29 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so quick. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, that'd be, uh, that'd be cool. Mm. Mm have a question actually what would be your best free tips to me if i'm trying to do a sub 45 minute 10k that's a good question bearing is. in mind i actually ran with your brother and i did it in 49 yeah and laid on the floor afterwards for about 10 minutes yeah so what would be your what would be your tips like that you would give to to, to speed your speed your run up that's that's a good question i do I think you've got to get yourself into a mindset of, and that, funny, I talk with a lot of lads at football and things, um, is it's so easy to, so I guess this is the first one, it's so easy to go out and just sort of plod, like do, oh, I'm just going to go and plod 5K, 10K. Yeah. But, which is good for some runs, but you've got to go out and do intervals. You've got to go and really push it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think if you can build some intervals into your training, I found that that sort of yeah. fires me up right, right straight away. It gets me going. If if you go out and just continue continuously plodding around the streets all the time, it it doesn't it doesn't. It'll, it'll get you fit, but it'll only to a certain point, and then you'll just plateau yeah. completely. Mm-hmm. And I'm no expert, but I've certainly seen it when I when I do it. So I think if you can get some intervals into your training, that's good. Um, don't get hooked up by it. Like it'll happen. Mm-hmm. Like if you if you're really focused on it, I've always. I've always felt that if I get like that, I don't know, if we take that 220, for example, I'm trying to stay quite relaxed about it and not be too fussed. It will happen yeah. at some point, whether it's October or 
two years down the line and I'm focused enough to go and try and do that. Um, but if it doesn't happen, like, don't worry, because it will happen at some point. Mm -hmm. um, as long as you're training right and um, you're doing the right things, I think don't get too hot, hooked up about it. Um, yeah. I said to, said to my brother Lou, and uh, the thing that I like about 5K and 10K, and I guess this is the third thing is, yeah, you can have like a strategy to what you're going to do. You might go off a little bit slower, but 5K, 10K is quite good because you can really just run as hard as you like and not worry too much. Mm. Um, so like for 5K, 5K is great because you can, you don't, I, I never panic too much that I'm going out really hard because if I die, I die. It doesn't matter at the end of the day, <laughs> but you might hold on. Yeah, Mind yeah. You. So yeah. I think the first thing probably is like just have a real go. If you go off, if you feel like you go off really fast, that's fine. But um, and you might die. But like I said, don't get hooked up about it. It yeah, will happen. Yeah. yeah. Um, just give it a good go. Give it a I good guess. go. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess with a marathon, you can't really do that. Marathon's different. You've you, got to go very strategic. Yeah. You've got to be really careful. Take gels on at the right time. Um, yeah, it's a completely different ball game. Yeah. But I, I've always felt 10k probably more, maybe a little bit more so. You have to be a little bit wiser, but I just gotta yeah, go. Just gotta I get that with the five k. I mean, when we first started running, I remember I used to think, "Oh, five k is so fucking long," because it was generally long. <laughs> yeah. But I now feel that I could walk out the door and just go and do a five k, yeah, and yeah. it'd be pretty, pretty straightforward. Yeah, yeah. And I think I could do a ten k pretty straightforward, but it's just yeah. that getting it down to. I don't even like saying 45 minutes now because it feels so slow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it will happen Compared though. to, happen. yeah. But for you, that's you've got to stay in your own yeah, lane. You've got to you? Like lane, for yeah. you, that is really quick. To me, yeah. that's really quick. Yeah, you yeah, are yeah. just like elite. You're like <laughs> not even human to me. <laughs> but like everyone's in their own lane, aren't they? And yeah. yeah. How would yeah. you do the, in, how is your best way of doing interval training? Like how would you do it? How would you map out like an interval training for someone who's training planning to do a 10k so you're just um, trying to get tips for yourself you don't care yeah, about the listeners yeah. uh, <laughs> literally um like i said i think yeah intervals are really important I, i've been really fortunate that like i said i've been picked up i've been say picked up i've, I've worked with a coach who sort of she helps and guides and supports me and um she'll put like programs together on like a free weekly basis for me um but like i said like i've touched on I've all, I've always seen um I've always seen that there's been a real uh sort of upward curve when I've built intervals into my training but it's again coming back to your injury point it's been right really careful how much and how hard you push those yeah, yeah. um so I probably do I, I try and we used to do like three sessions a week so it'd be like a Tuesday a Thursday and a Saturday but I found it was too much for my body it wasn't coping so I, I more go to like two interval sessions a week mm -hmm. um and uh i'll do a, like a classic session is eight times a k with a couple of minutes 90 seconds in between um or slightly longer reps so for a classic 10k if we were gearing up for a 10k race on a sunday a, a, an interval session um for the group that i'm in or for myself would be something like four times eight minutes um, with a couple of minutes in between mm -hmm. and that really is a good indicator of what you what you're going to run on the sunday it gives you a really good guide anyway okay so oh four you just run for eight minutes like so eight minutes so you do like a warm-up i know we do a couple of mile warm-up but you wouldn't have to do that much um but yeah then uh so four times eight minutes so you do eight minutes um and then a couple of minutes rest go again eight minutes and you do that okay, four times yeah. and that, that gives you quite a good indication as to where you are in terms of your 10k fitness mm. that you wouldn't do that all the time but that that's a really good like um indicator of what you what you could run for a 10k mm. yeah oh i like that you four can write that eight. down yeah i might do four times eight <laughs> you'll later. be doing okay. that tonight <laughs> yeah and that would be like that four times eight that would be eight minutes like gunning it basically yeah not to the point where you're like leaving everything out there mm -hmm. it's got to be it, yeah you you you'll struggle when you get to the third and the fourth mm -hmm. it's got to be um you yeah, do it think, at a race pace yeah almost yeah so it, i think our coach calls it like your lactate turn point now i'm getting scientific now i don't really <laughs> i don't go into that world too much um but yeah it's almost at that point where you're working as harsh as you possibly can before the lactate i mean you guys are no better than me yeah. but before it all kicks in and yeah you, I guess you're working right, pushing, you're trying to push that as high as you can, right? Yeah, so, so you've got a longer, yeah. bigger threshold. Yeah. That's mm. it. So you're almost working right up until that point. Um, but it's hard to know what that point is, right? So Until you, until until you, you chuck yourself in it, basically. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, mm. yeah, no, yeah, no, that yeah, makes yeah. that makes sense. I mean, it's all about just getting out and doing it, really. Mm. And uh, yeah, I mean, I don't do any interval training. 
No. No, I mean, it'd be quite cool to do. Yeah, you probably I guess should. I literally do do that. I mean, I'm talking about me. I mean, we're similar, aren't we? We just go out and just plod. And just, yeah, we just and run. Just do a run and then I'll come back and be like, oh, fucking slow time. It's probably because I do the same thing all the time. Yeah, like, yeah. I don't but we have, have any... just started, though. Like, I feel like surely that is quite a good way to start is to yeah. just run and just get a feel for it 100%. and enjoy it 100%. before you start actually taking it seriously, yeah, no, I think. Because I'm still at a point where, like, sometimes I'm like, I don't want to be doing this, yeah. but I'm going to do it anyway. Yeah, yeah. Whereas you want to get to a point where you're like, I love this, yeah, like, I want to yeah. take it seriously. And it's tough, right, when you look out the window and it's pouring with rain. Oh. Yeah. Do you know what? I go. love running in the rain, though. Like, obviously, I only run short distances. Uh, if yeah. you were to do, like, a... I mean, like, like a little bit of light. <laughs> yeah, but there's something about it. It's a bit, yeah, like, yeah. liberating, like, yeah, just yeah. being in the rain, running. Just getting out once you're out. Yeah. Me and Lou went out the other day from Peace Pottage, and it was tipping it down. Once we were about a mile in, we were like, actually, it's quite all right. Nice. Yeah, you don't mind it at yeah. all. Yeah. So. What, um... This is just, like, a really basic question. Yeah. What's your favourite pair of running shoes? So, um... Again, you, when we talk around some of the levers that you can pull, one of the things that I used to always do, and when you're running for time, this I, I probably I'm sure many people have done the same. You like go out the door and you wanna you run a 10k like really quick. And you're like, oh, I gotta do that every time I run 10k. Mm-hmm. So I was wearing like um, like really light shoes, and that was why I was picking up loads of injuries. I wasn't wearing very supportive shoes, so I now have like four pairs of running shoes which I rotate which is quite excessive you don't need four pairs of shoes but um I run a lot in hockers now which is like the mm. new that's what I have but yeah. people have been saying to me they're not good I really like them yeah I really like them so I, m- yeah my biggest downfall is I've uh in previous years has been running with shoes that are just one not got enough support for me two they're too light um and I try and get off the road as well because you're just pounding tarmac all the time. It's yeah. not going to do you any good. Yeah. So, yeah, I have two pairs of hockers that I run in. Um, they're quite heavy. They're quite clumpy, but they protect your legs big time. Mm. Um, and then I have uh, like a pair of hockers that are a lot lighter, um, which I could do sessions in. And then I've got the yeah the fancy Nike shoes that everybody's got. The Alpha Flies. Yeah. 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 What would be your marathon run? What would you wear for a marathon? Yeah, those alpha, alpha flies. flies. Oh, are they yeah. like the race ones? Yeah, they're the race ones. Yeah. They like go up on a shelf and they just come out for that one day. Well, I had, I, so I bought a pair last week. The new um, ones? I bought not the not the brand, brand new ones. I think the, the new ones are like number th- three version or something. I bought the number two. They were still like 220 quid. It's yeah, ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, I bought uh, the only one, the only ones they have white ones. So I thought, oh. yeah, so they came and I looked at them and I thought, so nice I've got to wear them on Sunday but it was raining so, and then there was a pat. it did say on like the race information it said like there's a patch where there's some there's 100 metres worth of grass so I was thinking I know what's going to happen like I'll be alright mm. they'll, they'll stay nice and white and then I'll get to this patch mate I got Destroy. to the patch mate, and they yeah they were all brown no. once oh, yeah, yeah, I was fuming <laughs> but um, yeah so I run I race in those um, when so yeah, that was so you ra- where did you come in that race I uh, won that race oh you won it yeah I won that race yeah. wow yeah, there you go. I won that race so, and that was 30, 30, 30 minutes. 50, yeah. yeah. There you go. So, yeah. Yeah. And they were the first, and the first time in the Nikes. So they've got a one in they one, they got a one, in one record now. Yeah, in those, yeah. They're hum- hopefully 100% success rate. 100% success rate. Yeah. Oh, so, that's wicked. Man. People say they like don't last long, though. Like if no. you were to do a marathon in them, you probably need another pair right? No, after. yeah. You, I, think, I think they advise like 500 miles for a pair of trainers. But yeah, if you do... 100 to 150 mile you can see them wearing already mm. like, there's nothing to them yeah yeah it's it it, it feels like you're running on cloud it's yeah, unbelievable it's when you put them on mm. like it's a joke like the bubble in it it's incredible and obviously they've been designed to support kipchoge and others run yeah. ridiculously times but um they do knock time off your run then it's, like, it's so it's so weird because like I, I think it's something mentally as well like psychologically you must be putting them on going oh, i feel really good I'm, yeah. you know do you know what i mean yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. but there must be there must be something in the sort of science of the shoe in terms of the the way it's made and everything but um yeah there's got to be something around the edge putting on a pair of shoe and you're like yeah. Yeah, i'm gonna go and run well i'm gonna today. run yeah. My, yeah. my best ever time yeah, yeah exactly yeah. yeah so maybe maybe i'll do that then so yeah <laughs> I, I rotate between all those shoes really yeah depending on up, the run which is excessive yeah, yeah but no um, i think that's yeah yeah if you run in the same pair that. of shoes all the time, I think you get injured quite quickly. Yeah, because yeah. you have like your slow shoes, your short run shoes. Yeah. You lock, yeah. yeah. No, it makes you sense. You've done your research, have you? Well, yeah, because my shoes aren't good enough, I got told. So I need you a need, new pair. You need a new pair. Yeah. 
Need some night ones, didn't you? Yeah, I need some after. Go and do some like gate analysis stuff. Yeah, you? I did that. Yeah. A running shot. Is that what you did? That's what I did, yeah, a few times yeah. when I first started, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they gave me the Hocker, I think they're the Clifton Nines. Yeah. And at first I did really like them, but I've had plantar fasciitis. Okay. Wearing them and I did my knee wearing them. So I saw an osteopath and he said, you need more support than them. Okay. So... Interesting. Yeah, mm. have to yeah, have, have a look. Need some more get your wallet out, Mike. Get me some alpha flies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just in exchange for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, should we start to round it off with like a last sort of question then? Yeah. I think a good question to end off with is like anyone that's looking to get into running or that's just started, what would be like your top tip for them? Take it slow. Mm. Take it slow. Don't um, don't overdo it. Well, because once you do one good run, you want to go again the next day and the next yeah. day and the next day. Take it take it really slow. Um, don't run every run like it's a five k race or a ten k race. Just go and enjoy it to start with and, and build it up from there. Mm. Uh, and it will take time. It yeah. does take a lot of time. Um, but yeah, I, I think just take it really slowly. Don't. You, it's like anything right if you throw yourself into it yeah. too much and you do too much too soon you get injured and that's where i'm sure a lot of people get put off by running mm. is you, you go out you do loads and then you get injured and then it's stop start from there so yeah not sure. naming any <laughs> names i've pretty well i've needed to hear this probably about yeah. however long yeah. because i stupidly went from running like 6k and then his um brother's girlfriend's training for the brighton marathon in yeah, a few yeah. weeks and i was like oh i want to do a run with you just to support you and she yeah. really appreciated it and she was like oh i'm doing an easy pace 14k tomorrow do you want to come i was like yeah. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Worst mistake ever. I couldn't move, couldn't walk for like walk for my knees were like week. swollen, couldn't yeah. bend or straighten them. Like, yeah, I just did such a big jump from what I was used to, which was just stupid. Yeah. Um, so yeah, take it slow. Yeah. It's <laughs> no like different. Like I guess it's no different if you're in the gym, right? Yeah. 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 yeah you'd you'd have go to. slow, you'd build it mm. up slowly. you you wouldn't go in and like, right, I'm gonna shove hundred K on the bench press and yeah. give it a go. Hurt yourself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you'd, you'd have to just take it really slow and um Find that love for it, I guess, as well. Like you yeah, said, you, from the start, you just enjoyed it and you love yeah. running, which is why you're so successful and, yeah. and, and quick. I guess if you find that find that love for it and then you build on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah you have to, yeah. And mm. it, it, if you're training for something, if you're training for something, don't don't get hooked up on times and distances. Like, continue to do it for enjoyment because you lose yourself in it otherwise. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's the most important thing. Take mm. it slow and enjoy it, I think. Wicked. Love that. Wow. Amazing. Thank you very much for yeah, really coming good. on and, uh, and and sharing your story and 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 wisdom. Yeah. And yeah, absolutely. Yeah, incredible no, times, mate. Me. And we really hope that you uh, hit that two twenty marathon. Yeah, thanks good very luck. Much. Thank you. You thanks have to keep us me. updated. We'll do. <laughs> All yeah. right then. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Cheers. Bye.